Have you made your fall decorations yet? I know it's already October. A lot of us have already made some stuff, but just in case you're a little behind, I have the perfect quick and easy block to teach you today. I'm really excited about it and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We are going to be making uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this adorable pumpkin star quilt block. Isn't this cute? I'm really, really excited about this, you guys. I know I've done other pumpkin blocks in the past, but this one I think is like next level cuteness. And you can use this block to make so many different things. I think we should just, uh, just jump into the video, right? Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Miriam and I talk about all kinds of quilting related things here on YouTube. I love quilting. I'm obsessed with it. I like to share stuff that I figure out and different blocks that I come up with and tutorials and things like that. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love for you to subscribe. Come along with me on this quilty journey. Don't forget to give this video a like. It really helps me out. Leave a comment if you would like to. So I announced last week that I'm going to be doing a giveaway of some of these really cute quilt block coasters that I'm making with my laser cutter. I will be reaching out to the people that won these this weekend. Keep an eye open for that. If you if you if you won, I'm not going to announce it here because I don't want anybody to get scammers contacting them. But you will get an email from me from Miriam at stitchobsessed.com if you did win. I am planning on making these and listing these for sale in my shop. But that's going to be a little while because <laughs> I have got so much going on and uh, I've kind of had to rethink some of my content planning for the rest of the year. So I'm just kind of scrambling to get things planned out and things figured out and everything. But I am completely in fall mode. I am dressed as a pumpkin today. I mean, I've got my orange dress on. If you notice, I dyed my hair darker. Uh, it was time. My hair was like five different shades of reddish blonde weirdness. So I dyed my hair. That was really fun. <laughs> On the quilting related stuff, I got my cake twist quilt top made. As you can see off to the side here, I have it hanging up. It is so beautiful. These fabrics are so cute, you guys. This was the fabric line Hey Boo by Layla Boutique for Moda. And uh, I just really, really love this quilt. It's so cute. If you're interested in this pattern, it's super easy. You use one layer cake and then some yardage for your borders. If you want to add borders, you don't have to. But it only uses one layer cake. And you just cut the layer cake up into pieces and then mix and match and sew them back together. And it just creates this beautiful quilt top. If you're interested in this pattern, there it is that this is a pattern that you get for free if you join my membership which is a like a monthly subscription membership and we have a sewing group that we're doing you get a free pattern you get discounts on my other products in my shop so if you would like to consider joining the membership i i would love for you to join if you don't want to you don't have to it's, it's there for you if you want it right oh and if you don't want to join the membership you can get the cake twist pattern for five dollars in my shop and i will link that down in the description box below okay now that i got that little blurb out of the way let's talk about this pumpkin start quilt block shall we so i've created this little handout um this is free you don't have to pay for it anything and it is it gives a breakdown of what pieces you need to cut how to make the half square triangles two at a time this time and then the piecing instructions for this block this block is really versatile you it's a great size you could make placemats you could make table runners you could make pillows with it you could make an entire quilt with it. I would love to see that. I am, if I had the time, I would probably make a full quilt, but I just don't know if I have the time right now to do it. Yeah, there's just, the possibilities are endless. Tote bags, so many things, so many things you could do with it. But today we're just focusing on the block to make it, which finishes at 14 inches by 11 inches, okay? 
So I kind of like the look of a rectangular quilt block. A lot of quilt blocks are always square. So I thought it would, I thought it would be fun to have it be a rectangular quilt block. So, but if you wanted it to be square, you can just add extra background fabric to the top, bottom, or one or the other, whatever. Anywho, what you will need for your block. Let's go over to the cutting mat and I will show you the pieces that you need for this block. All right, we're at the cutting mat. I already went ahead and cut everything so you guys don't have to watch me cutting fabric. <laughs> but here are my pieces that I cut. I used all fabrics that I actually got from the Fat Quarter Shop. If you ever need to kind of build up your stash, if you're looking for fabrics to build up, I highly recommend the Fat Quarter Shop sale section. They always have a great variety of fabrics and uh, they have really, really good sales in their sales section of yardage. So I've actually done that several times where I've gone in and just ordered a bunch of random fabric. And then I have fun stuff that I can kind of put together for projects like this. These are so cute. I mean, is that's, that just screams pumpkin, doesn't it? I'm using this brown kind of thatched looking fabric for the stem of the pumpkin. Then for the body of the pumpkin, again, I'm using this really cute pumpkin-y colored fabric. And then for the star, you know, I got to get a gingham in there because I just love gingham. <laughs> so, and I thought that matched really well with the pumpkin. And then for background, I just had some extra cream fabric from a previous project. So let's go through everything that we need. I will pop up a little... Um, image here to show you what you need if for some reason you don't want to get this handout you can just pause this and write down your fabric requirements okay you will need for the stem you need one one and a half inch by two and a half inch rectangle for the pumpkin pieces we need four two and a half inch squares two four and a half by two and a half inch strips and six three inch squares. Those are for our half square triangles. Then in for the star fabric, which I'm using that gingham, remember, uh, we need four three inch squares and one four and a half inch square. And then for our background pieces, we need two three inch squares two, two and a half inch by seven strips, two, eight and a half by one and a half inch strips, and then one, one and a half by 14 and a half strips. So very easy. This is a super scrap friendly project. If you have scraps left over from another project, uh, you could probably easily get these pieces from that, right? So those are the pieces that we need. So now our first step is to make our half square triangles. Now we are going to grab our, uh, all of our three inch squares, okay? From the background, star fabric, and our pumpkin fabric. And we're gonna put these, the background and star fabric squares with our pumpkin squares and we're going to make little stacks of these and I've got all of this broken down in the handout and I don't remember if I mentioned this but there will be a link in the description box for you to get this I'll email it to you you just need to click the link and it brings you to a form where you put in your name and your email address and then once we get that and you confirm your email, because I want to make sure I'm sending it to the right person, then this will be emailed to you and you'll be able to print it out if you want or use it on your computer, your phone, your tablet, whatever. Now we're just going to put all of our pieces together here. I'm going to move these things out of the way. So we're just going to make little stacks. So I'm just going to take the pumpkin and the star pieces and you just want to put them right sides together like that so that's one and we're going to get two half square triangles out of each one of these stacks i don't know if you noticed but i do really like using half square triangles in my blocks <laughs> and you want to make sure that you're putting the fabrics right sides together 
I'm sure someone will ask. I do not have a studio update right now. So I haven't gotten any extra work done on it since last time I talked to you guys. I've just been chugging away, getting stuff done, working on uh, my cake twist quilt and just trying to get caught up on many, many projects and figuring things out and kind of trying to make somewhat of a business plan of what I'm doing and getting ready for the end of the year. All right. So now we have our six stacks. So now I need to grab my marker. You guys know I love my Dritz Mark Begone marker, Mark Begone. So I'm just going to use this and I'm going to mark a, a diagonal line on all of my little stacks. And I'm going to use my ruler to make sure it's accurate. <laughs> just going to make my diagonal line. And this is going to be my guideline. And then when I take this to my sewing machine, we just stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of that mark. So then, if you don't know how to do this, it's in the, it's on the handout, but I show you how to do two at a time half square triangles. So now we've marked, we've put our two squares together and we've marked it. So now we're going to go stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of that mark. So I'm going to take these to my sewing machine. I'm just going to stack them up here. Like so, got my little stack and now I'm going to go stitch them. And that's what it will look like. So man, my line is really faint. I need a new marker, but the line is down the center here. And then we have our stitch lines on either side of our mark. Days of trying. Alright, we've got our little stacks stitched. Now I'm going to take them over to my cutting mat and cut these in half. And we cut right on the mark. We just take our ruler again and we grab our rotary cutter and we cut right down that marked line. Like that, and then we have two half square triangles. Give up the of perfection. Trust the simple way. So now I have 12 half square triangles. I need to press these. So I'm going to take them to my ironing board and I'm going to press them. This is a perfect time, too, for me to give you an update on my ironing board cover that I made. So several weeks ago, I made a patchwork ironing board cover, which is ridiculously cute. And I had some people with some concerns. So let's go over and talk about it while I press these half square triangles. We are. Ooh, it might help if I plug my iron in. My iron in. My iron. Whenever I hear the word iron to, I like, ironing. I think of the the version of Hairspray where John Travolta plays Mrs. Turnblad. can't remember her first name. But uh, she says, she says, Tracy Turnblad, keep it down. I'm trying to arn. <laughs> I just always think of that whenever I hear arn. Okay. Anyways, here is our ironing board. Let me show you how to do this here real quick. So, we just open up our half square triangle like that and I place it right side down and I take my arm <laughs> and I just press the seam to one side. Now if you want to press your seams open, you can. If you want to press them to the opposite side that I'm pressing, you can. It's totally up to you and what you want to do, what's comfortable, all that jazz. There we've got our half square triangle and there's our 
seem pressed. I'm just pressing to the dark side because that's just kind of what most people do, right? And it's just easy to do it that way. So there we go. So now while I'm pressing the rest of these, let me give you a little update on the ironing board cover. I had a lot of people concerned about there being um, like the seams of the actual cover coming through on the fabric. And I am happy to report I have not had that happen. Um, now, is that to say that it wouldn't happen to anybody or it can't happen? No. <laughs> but for mine, it hasn't happened. I even tested it. And I made this entire cake twist quilt with this cover um, and tested to see if the seams would sh come through, if I would have any um, like bleeding. Some people were concerned about the red bleeding. So I specifically took my white fabrics and pressed them on the red fabric. I had no bleeding. Um, and actually, the more I use the cover literally the flatter the seams are even getting so they're it's super smooth i mean there's a little bump obviously where a seam is but it's not like a huge bump and it's working great so far so i told everybody that i would give an update and that's my update so um so far so good you know and if if something does happen if there is bleeding or if there's a mark from a seam it is not the end of the world you know it would be a bummer if there was bleeding on like a quilt top that you had finished right obviously yeah that would be bad but i don't use steam hardly ever so i could see how using steam could possibly cause cause some bleeding but i don't i don't really use steam and if i did I would just avoid the red spots, the red patches, I guess. You use steam a lot, maybe don't use a fabric that you're concerned would bleed or wash it beforehand. For me, so far, so good with the ironing board cover. Now, the fact that the my seams are laying so flat too could possibly be because I'm, I have that um, wool cover on the actual ironing board so that might be helping the seams lay extra flat I don't know and I love it 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 makes me smile every time I see it and I actually when I have it closed up I'm not even like putting it away I just kind of leave it leaned up against one of my cabinets because I just like to see it you know just makes me happy that's really good <laughs> now I have my half square triangles made so cute. Now we need to take these back to our cutting mat and trim them down so they're a perfect two and a half inch square. Now um, I'm going to use a smaller ruler for this. Here I'll use my my trusty Omnigrid. We are just going to come over here and I like to use on your ruler you have this nice 45 degree angle line, right? So I like to use this for when I'm trimming half square triangles. So what I do is I line up that 45 degree line with the 45 degree line in the half square triangle where the two fabrics meet, right? So I line that up and I find the two and a half inch square mark. So our two and a half inch square marks are right here. And see, I have plenty of clearance there. I've got a little bit. So we're just cutting off like a little booger from each, each side. And we're also cutting off those little dog ears. So that I'll cut down on um, bulk. And then I spin it. And then line up the two and a half inch lines on the edges that I just cut. And then trim and trim and there we have a perfect two and a half inch square half square triangle and the little dog ears have been trimmed off looks like a little kite very cute so I'm just gonna keep on doing that so I'll do another one so you can see so we just get that angle lined up and I see where my two and a half inch square 
lines are. And we do a little trim there. Trim there. And I'm gonna finish this up and then we will start piecing our block together. Now we have our half square triangles made. We have everything else cut. Now we get to do the fun part, which is assembling the block. First, I'm gonna start with the stem piece. So I just take my stem and one of the top borders or top background pieces that go. And we're just gonna sew these together. If I can get the fabric to not shift. A brawler. There we go. So we just put that stem piece in between the two two and a half by seven inch pieces, and there's our stem piece. Next row, <laughs> I've got this little workspace right next to my sewing machine table. So what I like to do is, let's move this. I like to lay out all the pieces in rows so then I kind of know um, what I'm doing and what goes where. So I'm just gonna look at my diagram here on my paper and just lay out all the rows in order and in position of how they're gonna go when I put them into the quilt block. This was such a last minute decision to make, <laughs> to make this block and to make this tutorial. I was kind of racking my brain trying to figure out what to do this week. And I was like, fall is here. All I wanna be doing is making fall projects and sewing. But I've been kind of in a uh, overthinking mode with what I'm doing with my work and what I want to do with my channel and things like that and it's just been it has been a little a little overwhelming just trying to figure out what I want to do but I think I'm kind of figuring out what I want to do and, and I just kind of decided like if I want to make a fun new tutorial then why don't I just do that so I sat down on my computer and I designed this quilt block and I thought this is ridiculously cute and uh, I'm really really excited about it and I hope you guys like it it's really easy and pretty quick to make and like I said before you can make like so many different things with this block we'll see if I can get if I can schedule in enough time to actually make like at least like a throw size quilt with it I would really like that. <laughs> All right, so it goes like that. And then we've already made our stem piece. So that goes there. And then these two one and a half inch by eight and a half inch pieces go on the sides once this is all sewn together. And then once everything's sewn together, then we add our bottom piece, which is that one and a half inch by 14 and a half. And that's our block. So this makes it really easy for me then to, while well, I'm sitting right next to my sewing machine, I just work on this row. One horizontal row, and then 
move on to these little pieces and then sew those together and then do that row and then kind of build everything as I go. Let's start sewing, shall we? super picky in the way that I press so that's what the back of that's what the back of the star points look like pressed and then I just flip it over real quick just to give it a good set just so everything's laying nice and flat for when we piece everything together So that's what the back of the that part looks like. Beautiful! And then I'm gonna press the bottom star part the same way I pressed the top. Just like that. And now we are ready to piece it together. So I'm going to set these back over on my little work place ne next to my sewing machine. Oh my goodness, you guys. Look at this little cherub sleeping in her bag. Ooh, oh my goodness. Precious. <laughs> Hi, sweet baby. All right. Back to the video. <laughs> so we start with our stem. And then our points, center, bottom points, it's coming together. It's, it's just so ridiculously cute and I think it just looks so nice. And I think this black is a really good combination of um, modern and traditional blocks. So now we're just going to put our pumpkin together. So I'm going to grab my top points piece and my center and line up my seams we have a pumpkin <laughs> it's a great pumpkin charlie brown <laughs> so now i'm just going to press these real quick so i'm just going to press these seams that we just placed Let's see. Let's press them this way. I'm pressing towards the center. Let's see how that lays. Let's see what that looks like on the front. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm just going to press the other seams towards the center then. It's a lot of seams for just a small little block, right? So that's what the back looks like pressed. And this is what the front looks like. It looks perfect. It looks really good. So now we add our eight and a half inch by one and a half inch pieces on the sides. Oh, 
Now it's just kind of back and forth between the ironing board and the sewing machine, getting these last pieces added. So I just pressed them out towards the border that was just added, or background piece, whatever you want to call it. Set it. Oh goodness. It's so cute. Now we just need to add our top and our bottom, and then it'll be done. We grab our top, lines up perfectly. I love when that happens. <laughs> And as I'm going, I'm just making sure that all of my seams are laying in the way that they were pressed, just so nothing gets funky. Okay. And then we add our little bottom piece. And again, I'm going to make sure that my seams are laying in the way that they should be as I stitch over them. And the way I do that is I can just kind of feel them if they move as I'm going. All right, one more time to the ironing board. <laughs> and again, I'm gonna press the seam towards the outside of the block so everything's laying nice and flat. You know you've done a good job with your pressing when the back of the block looks just as good as the front of the block, right? And all the seams are laying so nice and clean. Let me flip it over. And there we have our beautiful pumpkin block. Yay! <laughs> Check it out. That's perfect. Perfect. I love it so much. Thank you so much for joining me with for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you make at least one of these. It could be a really cute little wall hanging for your wall for fall time. Let me know how you are going to use this block. I can't wait to see if you make it shoot me an email and send me what you made. I would love to see it or tag me on social media if you post on social media. But uh, just thank you so much for watching today. Thank you everyone that um, has joined the membership, who likes my videos, who has subscribed, who uses my affiliate links. I really appreciate everyone and I'm very excited to see what the rest of this year has in store for us and I think it's going to be really good, and I'm really looking forward to doing some really fun, festive tutorials. So have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you very soon, okay? Bye!